What if my school system uses a different screening procedure than this one? This video is based on ASHA 1997 guidelines. However, even if your school system does not follow these guidelines, the basic principles of pure tone hearing screening are similar. You may have to adjust some of the information from this video to meet the screening requirements of your school system. For example, if your school system includes 500 Hz for screening, you need an especially quiet room, otherwise this frequency will be missed by many children with normal hearing. Some school systems also use other technology, such as tympanometry and otoacoustic emissions, for school screening. These tests are outside of the scope of this video. Ask your educational audiologist or supervisor for instruction on other equipment. How do I test very young kids or kids who are difficult to test? It is common to encounter students who are difficult to test. Be sure to ask the educational audiologist or your supervisor in advance regarding how you are to proceed if you cannot test a student. It may be necessary to refer the student to an audiologist for further testing. Hearing screening with young children is often done with toys instead of hand raising. If a child has limited mobility, find a response that they can do consistently to indicate that they heard a tone. Sometimes when you're doing a school hearing screening, you have to test um, young children or children who are a little bit more difficult to test. And they might not want to raise their hand or they might have trouble raising their hand. And so um, you can, instead of a hand raise, have them associate some type of game with responding to the beep. Okay, so here are a few examples. And I'll start off with very simple dropping blocks into a bucket. Okay, Elena. I am going to put these earphones on the table. Okay, let's put the bucket over here. And we're going to listen for that beep together. Actually, uh, we'll have your mom listen too. Remember that first game we played? Let's see who can do it first. Hold on to your block. Hold on to your block. Okay, I am going to Hold present on. a loud beep here. We both have green ones. Yes. Oh, and I have a green one too. You ready? Okay, hold it up near your ear. Are we listening? Let's see who can hear it first. Oh, Elena won. Good job. Good job. Can we try one more? We all, do we all have to be green again? Yeah? Okay, we ready? I don't know. What do you think? Do you think you beat your mom that time, getting it in there? Okay. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to put the earphones on your ears, and the beeps are going to be really quiet. Okay. All right, but this time, only you get to hear the beeps because they're going to be right next to your ears. So you're going to have to let us know when the beeps are there. Ready? Okay, look at me. Can you look at me? Here we go. All right. Now, pick a block. Oh, let's hold it by your ears. You ready? Listen, listen, listen. Oh, nice job. Okay, next one. Pick up a block. Oh, by your ear, by your ear. Listen, listen, listen. Yay, good job. Okay. All right, and there are other kinds of activities, whatever toys that you have at hand, you can use. So let's try a couple more. All right. Okay. Which is the biggest ring? Which is the biggest one? Oh, is that the biggest one? Or is that the biggest one? Oh. Okay, you ready? Oh, we gotta listen. Listen, listen. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> You're silly. Listen. You heard a beep, didn't you? Okay, let's try that one. Face. Okay, so that would be another kind. Now, this one was a little bit distracting for her, so you want to find something that's interesting enough to keep their attention, but not so distracting that the game itself stops them from responding. Let's try the pegboard. Good job! All right, yeah, sometimes you really have to pound it in there, doesn't it? Ready? There it is, good job! What should I do if I'm not sure if the student heard the tone or they don't understand the instructions? Try re-instructing the child first. Raise your hand and ask the child to do the same. Then present a loud sound from the audiometer with the earphones on the desk and ask if they heard it. 
If so, present another tone and show the child what to do by raising your own hand and asking them to raise their hand. Try several repetitions with a delay in your hand raise until they are raising their hand first. Consider making it a game to see who can raise their hand first when a tone is presented. If you cannot condition the child to respond, then they should be referred for further testing. What do I do if they only fail to respond at one frequency? If a child fails to respond at only one frequency, that child needs to be referred for further testing. What is the difference between frequency and intensity? Frequency is heard as pitch, like do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, and intensity is heard as loudness, such as whisper, talking, shouting. What do the screening results mean? If the child passes the screening and you have done a good job of following the screening procedures, it is most likely that the child does not currently have a hearing loss. If the child fails the screening, they may have a hearing loss, but keep in mind the screening does not diagnose a hearing loss. Children with normal hearing can fail a hearing screening if there is too much background noise, if the equipment is not working, if the screener does not use correct procedure, or if the child is not paying attention to the test. Many children who fail a hearing screening have a temporary or permanent hearing loss which needs to be confirmed or ruled out with further audiological testing. What should I do if the equipment doesn't work? Check to make sure the audiometer is plugged into an outlet. If the unit is plugged in but it does not turn on, check another outlet to see if the outlet is the problem. If the outlet is fine but the unit does not turn on, make sure the power cord is not frayed and is snugly inserted into the unit. If power is getting to the audiometer but there is no sound coming out of the earphones, check to make sure the earphone cords are snugly connected to the audiometer on one end and firmly connected to the earphones on the other end. If the cords are fine, check to see that the tone button is pressed in firmly. In some cases, the audiometer will have a continuous on mode and pressing the tone button will actually stop the tone. If this is the case, find the continuous on mode button and turn it off. How are the parents notified if their child is referred or fails the screening? Notification for the parents varies based on the procedure in effect in the specific school system. Check with your school system to see if you need to contact the parents or if that is done by someone else. I'm not sure if the child heard the tone or not. What do I do if I'm not sure? If you are not sure if the child heard the tone or not, re-instruct the child and try the tone again. Make sure the child is aware that they need to make a clear hand raise or other signal when they hear the tone. What about earwax? Can it cause a hearing problem? What should I do if I see a lot of wax? Earwax in the ear canal is usually normal. In a healthy ear, the earwax naturally travels down the ear canal and out of the ear where you can see it. In some cases, earwax becomes impacted, meaning it clogs the ear canal. This can happen sometimes because the child produces a lot of earwax or if it does not work its way out normally. In addition, if the child constantly pushes the earwax back into the ear canal with cotton swabs, earplugs, or other devices, then the earwax can become impacted. If the earwax appears to be blocking the entire ear canal but does not cause the child to fail the hearing screening, check with your supervisor to determine if your school district refers these children for medical evaluation. If in doubt, refer the child to the school nurse. If the child does not pass the screening, does it mean that he or she has a hearing loss? If the child does not pass the hearing screening, it means he or she is at risk for hearing loss, but it does not always mean that the child has a hearing loss. Without an audiological evaluation, it is not possible to say. How do I know if the screening room is too loud? The best practice for hearing screening is for the screener to test the room using a sound level meter with an octave band filter following American National Standards Institute, ANSI, S3.1 standards. However, this is prohibitively expensive for most school systems. Instead, ANSI standards have psychoacoustic procedures for checking background noise. A modification of these procedures was described as part of the listening check. For a complete psychoacoustic check, do the following. First, test the room in the worst possible conditions that will be experienced throughout the day. For example, if the air conditioning will be going on and off, do the listening test when it is on. Second, position someone with normal hearing in the position that will be used for the children. Present all frequencies at the screening level two times. Third, have the listener explore the positions the children may take during the screening. 
to examine if direct vibration is creating sound when someone rests an elbow on the table or a head back on the headrest. Fourth, according to the standard, a second normal hearing individual must be tested in exactly the same way. Many school systems use only one listener, but be sure to follow all of the remaining steps to ensure that the background levels are low enough for accurate testing. Be sure to check periodically that the background level remains constant because changes in classes, lunchtime, or the cycling of air conditioning or heating systems can change the background noise level. If the student does not pass, what do I do next? If a student does not pass the screening, your part of the testing is complete. However, your responsibility is not over. It is important that you mark refer on the child's paperwork and that you follow the steps that are set up in your school system so that the child receives the appropriate follow-up testing. What do I do if the child doesn't speak English? If the child does not speak English, have the child watch other children during the hearing screening. You may also be able to teach the screening procedures using gestures. Can I hurt the child if I mess up and give a tone that is too loud? A loud sound next to a child's ear will be uncomfortable for the child and may result in their refusal to take the test, so be careful to avoid doing this. If you accidentally present a loud sound to a child, the sound will probably be too short in duration to cause any permanent damage to the child's hearing. If the room is too loud, can I make the tone louder? No, under no circumstances should you increase the tone to make up for a noisy screening location. If you cannot find a quiet screening room, reschedule the screening and talk to the school officials about the need for a quiet screening location. What do I do about students with hearing aids? Students with hearing aids have already been identified as having a hearing loss and have received audiological management. If your report forms do not include a place to indicate that hearing aids are worn, find a place to write the information onto the form and ask your supervisor for the correct procedure. Never screen a child with hearing aids in the ears. What should I do if I see head lice? If you notice head lice, you should notify the school nurse and reschedule the child for a hearing screening at a later date. Do I need parental permission to test a student? Usually, all students in public schools are required to undergo periodic health screenings, including hearing screenings. If a parent refuses to have his or her child screened for reasons that are supported by the school, this information should be on file with the school system. You may have to check with the school nurse to determine if any students may not be screened. Am I ready to go after watching this video? It is strongly recommended that all hearing screeners participate in hands-on learning in conjunction with this video. If hands-on learning is not possible, be sure to watch the demonstration portion of this video several times and practice with several adults prior to testing children. Be sure to find out who the contact person is within your school system or health department so you can ask questions as needed. What if students, parents, teachers, or administrators have questions about hearing screening? For general questions about the screening process, it is best to have informational handouts available. If these are not available from your school system, there are many online resources. A list of resources and some handouts is available at the website shown on this video.